Uh, so we'll be discussing this controversial issue of direct primaries. Join us on the show now is the Honorable Uju Kingsley Chima. He is representing Ohaji Egbema Oguta Oru West Federal uh, of Imo State. And uh, he's also a member of the APC. On the phone also, we have Honorable Sergius Ogun, who is representing Ishan North, East, um, um, Southeast Federal Constituency of Edo State, and is a member of the People's Democratic Party. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Let me start with Honorable Sergius Ogun, because um, you are against direct primaries. And I'm starting with you because many Nigerians feel that Direct primaries is a new way to go, especially they're excited because it means that every card carrying member of the party can participate in the primary election. But you're against this. Why is this? Yeah, I am against it for the simple reason that it's too expensive. Because you to require elections being conducted in every unit. And that will mean that party will have to mobilize their members to come out. And I think we have to send monitors. So for me, that have over 196, okay, we have over 196 wards in my state, Edo State. And I have over 100 uh, units in my constituency. So it will mean that I think we have to send minimum of two people to every unit where this election will take place. And as you know, INEC usually engage adult staff during uh, elections. So the people you have in INEC offices in the local government are usually no more than 10, you know, even including their security men. So you have to dispatch that number of adult staff and then uh, security men right. to monitor all this. Okay. We cannot afford it. I am one that believes that we are spending too much on elections. You cannot be borrowing money from China to just fund elections. There are so many things crying for attention today. But if I may just add, as an individual, I do not mind direct primaries. But the bill that came right. from the committee to the House was gave the option of direct or indirect. So the parties should be allowed to choose what works for them. Okay. That's my point. All right. Go ahead. Okay. For me, it's um, if direct primaries, what best serves the people? What best represents, what best uh, captures what it, uh, who it is that they would like for them to represent? If it's the direct primaries, then can't the party find cheaper ways, more creative ways to hold these direct primaries without incurring too many costs? I agree with you. That is why the bill, before it was amended on the floor of the House during the clause by clause consideration by Honorable Femi Hakim Gwajabea Miller, the Honorable Member representing Suru Liri One, Lagos, amended it. So I'm saying we should have adopted that one that said that we should do direct or indirect. Mm -hmm. Now the parties are allowed to choose direct or indirect. So the parties should be allowed to choose what works for them. As we speak today, go and check the party constitutions. The main party, the main political parties, PDP, APC. They have the option in their constitution, direct or indirect. So the parties should be allowed to, should be given the discretion to make that decision. It shouldn't be by law. Right. Even the United States of America that we are mimicking, the Democratic Party, they have that in their system. All right, let me... Let talk me... about you here, please, you're talking about caucus. You know, let me come to honorable. By, by direct. All right, sir. Let me come by law compelling the parties. Right. The parties have a right. Let me come to honorable Juchima. Let me add him to this conversation because he is completely in support of the direct primaries. And Busai just said that it's expensive. Do you agree? Thank you very much. First of all, let me thank honorable Sejus for. Alluding to the fact that him as an individual believes in direct primaries. If he believes in direct primaries, why do we not shift um, the, the, the decision to parties to make or take, take decision on whether to do direct primaries or indirect primaries? And the idea of saying that it's too expensive, I do not believe in it as well, too, 
because we have a budget. 2021, the executive arm of the government brought a budget of over 13 trillion to us and we passed it as a national assembly. In 2022, we have another budget of 16 trillion, and which I know by special grace of God, I don't know how much we're going to pass, but I know that we're going to pass that budget again for implementation for 2022. And why should we say it's expensive? If we get a portion of that money to give Nigeria's credible election, to give the people whom they really want to serve them, I don't think it is expensive. The foundation of true democracy begins from party primaries. And if a party do not get a, a, a representative that will give the people what they want, that will represent them in accordance with the details and the minds of the people, democracy has not thrived. So I strongly believe that the direct primary is sending us back to the era of Ocean A4. And what I mean by Ocean A4, where the people will queue behind whomsoever they want to elect as mm -hmm. a representative. Mm -hmm. And you see the cost, we're talking about cost, 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 cost. Uh, my sister, Honorable Sejus, I can tell you today that if the party in your ward believes in Mr. A as the person that will leave them out of whatever infrastructural decay they have in their community or in their world. I bet you that the people may or may not mind what to be the cost implication of them coming out to vote for whomsoever they right. want. Okay. And we say cost. We have NYC. Hello? Yes, go ahead, sir. We have NYC. We have over how many thousand NYC all over the country. We can assist Nigeria. We can assist Nigerians too by making it in such a way that these NYAC members can be deployed by INEC. I kept on saying it. INEC's role in um, party primary is mere observation, mere, mere, that's observing um, what is, uh, we won't use the word monitor, it's observing the process, whether is it free and fair and report back to their head office. INEC is not a person conducting the party primaries by what our electoral act, provi electoral act provides for. So the idea of crying more than the bereaved. Right. INEC is like the bereaved. We're saying that it's not so much. It's, okay. it's neither here nor there. All right, let me get a few more questions in. Go ahead, Ima. So, um, uh, Who's your question to? Segers, yes, okay. from Edo State. The Edo State parties sold forms last year, before the elections. Um, for nomination forms during the last general election, presidential alone was 45 million. Governorship was about 20 million. What exactly, and our belief was that, you know, this was used to run the elect primaries within parties. Is this correct? And if, if yes, so why then do we think that there's no money to fund direct primaries within parties? Ah, my dear sister, you don't want to go into that. Maybe we should just not bother discussing that here. Because you also know in this amendment, we have also increased the monies that um, political parties can spend or candidates can spend in the election from House of Assembly to the National Assembly to governorship and to presidential elections. You know, and all this one is even a lie. People are saying, but why are they increasing it? So if what you have just said now is correct, that the party can raise a lot of money, and then people have mm -hmm. talked about party members paying dues and contributing money, why are we still increasing the monies that um, people should spend to win election? If any governor tells you, I don't know about the north, but in the south, south, and maybe in the southwest, if any governor tells you they spent less than 15 billion, mm. maybe 20 billion, to win their governorship election, election proper, forget about the primaries, that governor, I can tell you, is lying. No, we talk about the national. So those monies, I don't know where they go to, but even at that, it's not even enough. It's not enough to mobilize people to come out and queue. But if I might even add, my dear brother talked about uh, option A4. Why did we not amend the, this uh, electoral act to reflect the option A4 in the general election. That's the contradiction. That one is cheaper. And my brother also mentioned something about getting NYC, but you have to pay. NYC are INEC ad hoc staff. They are paid. Yes, they come to observe, but you have to pay them. They are not on, they are not on INEC payroll, but for that period, when they come out to work for elections, you have to pay them, you have to manage the logistics. 
move them from point A to point B, and then pay them an allowance. All right, let so, me go. Let me go on like a quick. I said, I don't mind it. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, I'll let's talk about sending a question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this issue of direct primaries or not. And uh, we still have Honorable Uju Kingsley Chima with us and Honorable Sejos Ogun with us. Uh, talk about a question before the break. Go ahead, please. Yes, Honorable Uju Chima, I wanted to ask you um, your colleague in the assembly said that why didn't they put the option available for two so that the parties would choose? Why are they, why, why is the new law specific? for parties and not specific for, um, uh, and not giving that option to, for internal democracy to each, for the parties to decide what yes. be, best suits them per time. Why do you believe that policy was, that, that clause was put in specifically? Well, thank you very much. I, I sincerely thank the leadership of the National Assembly, <laughs> uh, more especially the Senate that. President and the Speaker. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Very clearly. Yeah, more especially the senior president and the speaker for standing by the side of the people. Whether anybody want to believe it or not, I like what Honorable Sejus asked. He was on the floor of the House when we debated um, the electoral act amendment, and he knows actually the entries that played out during the debate. It was a very long debate that even um, led to a lot of... Uh, issues and um, counter issues. Um, nobody has mandated the, the parties to um, choose, uh, nobody has mandated the party, but what we are looking at, or what the, the National Assembly is looking at is how to get our electoral process right. And if it means um, giving um, laws or making laws that can shape our democracy, that can sustain our democracy, I don't see any crime attached to it. I remember when I made mention of Ocean A4, I said it because Nigerians, even up to today, are saying that Abiola's election was the best election ever had in this country. Check it even within you. And this election, because it emanated from the grassroots to the top. Let me tell you, Mr. my sister, nobody, it's very difficult for people to rig elections at the, at the village and the ward level because Everybody, both the man and the woman, the whole persons from that community, knows themselves. And if you read the election against um, a popular candidate, that popular, um, um, that um, uh, rigged the election cannot see the light of the day, cannot sustain, and cannot meet the test of time because the people will vote within that local level. So for me, I, I, I never see it as a crime if National Assembly, in her wisdom, could see that the best way to sustain our democracy is making a law that will re revert back electoral process back to the back to the people. Going going and by what do you mean by back to the people? Hello, I'm Honorable, to you, my Honorable, Honorable Jima. To going by the fact that the governors are totally against the idea that it has been a law. So many of them, some of them do agree that we should have the uh, we should internally decide on which on, on which to go with. However, the issue is legalizing it kind of makes it Casting stone, and that's the real issue. So, are you saying, do you, are you saying it's totally necessary to make it um, legal my, and not have it? Um... My, my sister, it is it is long overdue and very necessary. Have we not been the party's options all these years to choose who becomes their candidate? And what what is happening in almost all the parties? Few persons will sit in their bedroom and write names of. Um, um, delegates okay. and write them names of candidates and submit to INEC. And INEC do not have the power to remove or add any candidates or candidates brought by political parties. I feel that instead of we playing in the hands of these few individuals who believe that Nigeria is their own estate, who believe that they can do anything and get away with it, instead of we mortgaging the future of our children, mortgaging the Lagos. Um, East, East Road, mortgaging our rail line, mortgaging the poor electricity supply, mortgaging all this in the hands of these few who never wanted this country to succeed. The best thing we can do is put it as a law. So the moment you violate it, the court of laws will actually give you the interpretation which that will suit 
what is the best form of having a democracy sustained. Mind you, each time we go to court or uh, um, on electoral, uh, election matters, the court will say that the party decides what they will do. So if a party decides now to give a blind and a cripple um, the ticket of the party because maybe it's going to be uh, 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 just is going to be a sort of um, is is going to be um, is going to do the the bidding of his own godfather. Mm -hmm. The party goes with it. Mm -hmm. We don't care whether it's going to be counterproductive or not. Right. How long shall we continue to be in this kind of bandage? Okay, let me come to yeah, go ahead. Um, but as you, I've heard your argument for you know direct primaries. The governors, the entire governors forum, have been in the papers all past weeks calling on the National Assembly to do differently. And they also can put pressure on the president before his accent is on, the, on this um, law. Do you think that this would eventually be sustained? So that we're not just going back out. Hello, hello. Is it me you're asking? No, I'm actually on the phone. Yes, is sir. Me? Yes, yes, sir. Honorable you? Honorable, yes. Okay. Let me tell you the simple truth. I actually believe that the governors will have um, a rethink, believing that this is actually a clarion call for the people of Nigeria. Uh, I, I, uh, if their reasons is that the cost of um, conducting party primaries will be so high, there is no governor in Nigeria that cannot fund party primaries in his state. There is no governor in Nigeria that cannot raise up fund that will support the national party in doing their primary. And I, I don't see a genuine reason of funding or a genuine reason that funding is a problem of um, uh, direct primaries. So if funding, unless Nigeria or Nigeria is saying today that 350 billion naira from what INEC is saying is too much for us to, um, to give out to the people of Nigeria and have a credible um, free and fair election. Right. But if it's not too much, we'll be spending three years of Naira on issues that do not even impact positively on the lives right. of the people. All right, let me come to Honorable Sir Jess. Rather than that satisfy the interests of few individuals. Let me come Why to Honorable... Why can't we spend such money to have free and fair election? So, Honorable Sir Jess, let me come Hello. to you. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Chima. Let me come to Honorable Sir Jess, because... Um, um, they have raised the issue of the fact that we have to weigh the costs. So we're saying, yes, it might cost some money, but if we're looking at the fact that this is how we're going to strengthen our democracy, is a cost we have to pay. Do you agree? Or do you have a change of heart? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't mind the fact that if we have a system that can work for everyone, and in the long run, we will help build this democracy. I don't have a problem with that, but even the direct primary is not foolproof. Or it's not full -proof. Okay, now, I take you to the election that produced the primary, direct primary that produced uh, the current governor of Lagos State. I remember you people were there to cover it. Governor Sanwolu scored 970,000 votes. Governor Ambody scored 72,000, bringing it to a total of one point. For three million votes. In the general election, San Wolu scored 739,000 votes. So, which means the 970,000 APC members that came out to vote for him in the primaries didn't come out to vote in the general election. There are independents that say, okay, we just like this guy. They didn't come to vote. There are any opposition that will say, okay, no, on the governorship, I will vote for APC or something. All those guys didn't come to vote. If it becomes more scandalous, if you look at the direct primary that brought the, gov the president in, with the kind of votes that he scored in Kano and Kaduna, compared to the, his, the votes he got in the general election. So if you are talking about it's more transparent, it's giving opportunity to people to vote, it didn't reflect in the primaries that were done by the APC. It didn't reflect. So you see subject to manipulation. So. When you're talking about the governors not being comfortable and all that, if the governors want to run it, they will run it. It just means that they will dissipate more, more energy. That's all. Right. Okay, because so in fairness to everyone, people are buying votes now. If you know what went down in this Anambra election, my sister, yeah. you all have headaches there. <laughs> and then you now have to do that twice because you have to encourage the people to come at first. Okay, you know, I'll, come, I'll, come, I'll come back to you on that. Honorable Sergeant. 
I'll come so back. So let me let me retreat. Right. Please reiterate. Go ahead, please. Yeah, that I personally, I do not mind direct primaries. But what I'm saying, that should be left for the parties to decide. Even the APC, they, they, they looked at the states as, okay, what is, what is workable for this state is direct. They look at other states and say, what is workable here is indirect. That flexibility should be there. Okay. Don't let it be a law that is not cast in stone, that you cannot move it either way. All right. And that is over legislation. That's okay. the point I'm making. All right, go ahead, Tokun. Okay, so um, I want to ask you, Honorable Sergio Sogun, um, you mentioned money. You mentioned it being expensive. That seemed like your major um, argument against this. Aside from the monetary part, what else do you think um, is the reason indirect, um, this direct um, system know. would not work? That's number one. Number two, you heard what your colleague said, saying that the idea of godfathers or a few people deciding by virtue of just writing names, who becomes who within the state, needs to stop. Don't you, do you not agree that this would end that system, even though we'll be paying more for it? It will not. It will not, like I referred you, I mentioned, you cover the governorship primaries, the direct primaries in Lagos. Are you telling me that the godfather there didn't have his say on who emerged? Yeah, because you cannot tell me a sitting governor could not muster even 100,000 votes. A sitting governor. So it's not, it's not um, fraud proof. That's what I'm saying. It's still, it's still open to fraud. It's still open to manipulation. If the godfather, if the governors want a candidate, don't forget the governor con governors control the parties. In any of the in the major political parties, they say the governor is the leader of the party. So he controls the state chairman, the local government chairman, and then even the ward chairman. They are all controlled by the governor. If he gives instruction down, or she gives instruction down to say, look, these are the people that must come out. These people should be encouraged. If you hear that, look, I have received 2,000 naira to come out tomorrow to vote in the direct uh, primary, and that person say, I didn't give me. Okay, the party didn't want me to vote them. Most likely, they will go to their farms. You know? So if you tell people not to go to their farms to come out to vote, you must give them something. Wow. You must compensate them. So I go back to the cost. So to say that the godfathers will not be able to pull their weight, it's, it's, it's not correct. Okay. Let it's me come. It's let me it boils down to people putting money down and doing what they want to do. All right. Let me let me come to so Mary. Let's get it right. But All right. In, in any. Okay. okay. Hey, Mary. Yes. So, Honorable Ujuchiba, my question yes, is. Yes, Okay. So, personally, I feel that direct primaries is like a way forward. We're talking e voting, we're talking electronic voting, we're talking e transmission. And I feel personally that um, direct primary, primaries will just make this, you know, one cohesive move forward in our electioneering process. But, you know, listening to Honorable Sergius, where he says that manipulation can still occur, you know, do, um, in the direct primaries, and you seem so confident that this would solve many of the problems that we have at the primaries. Uh, is there any response you have for him to further allay convince him, oh. allay his fears, convince Nigeria yeah. that direct is better and manipulations will actually disappear or be minimized. Thank you very much, Arebu. Sejus is one of the resource persons we have in the house. And looking at him, hello? Yes. Looking at him, you can, you can see that he's only doing a collective um, line of his political party. Sejus is not speaking as uh, Sejus I know because he has said earlier that he supports direct primaries. And if you talk about manipulation, I want to ask Honorable Sejus the question. Let's go for Anambra election. Let's use Anambra election as an example. You have over 2.7 million people who are supposed or who are supposed to vote in Anambra's election. What it means is you have eligible voters of uh, within the range of 2.7 million people, sorry. And if I may ask, is it cheaper to lobby financially induced to consulting million people? Or is it cheaper 
to induce the delicate form of primaries that they do in states where only 10 or 5,000 people will go and elect um, their choice of uh, candidate for the general election. I strongly do not agree with uh, Zedus that uh, money will play in. There is no system that is perfect. There is no system in the world that is perfect. Even the most advanced democracy we just witnessed was the um, America's election, USA election. And you can see, too, that a lot of, even the, one of the candidates came out to say that the election was, it was cheated out of the election. So what I'm saying, in essence, is now that the only thing that survived actively in this country are those things that are the best thing we can do now is inculcate these direct primaries in our legal system so as to have an institution that is stronger than any individual. An institution that is stronger than people's personal interest. And that is the only way to go. Let's give you, let me give you an example with the Apuga candidate. Hello? You can hear you. Hello? Very clearly. Let me give you. Let me give you an example with Abga candidate in the last election. My sister, whether anybody likes Soludo's name or not, but nobody will say that Soludo is a mediocre or is not fit to govern the state. What is the special background? A first class material um, University of Nigeria. What is pedigree? Former um, advisor on economic matters to the president of Obasanjo former CBM governor, even though he was in our uh, is in Africa, he's still a member of um, um he's still a member of um, economic team of our own APC government. That is to tell you the confidence too our government reposed in him in making him a member of the economic team. So on that note, you can see that Africa took time to choose a candidate that is marketable to the people. Mm. And that may have formed to them winning the election convincingly, having about 19 local governments out of 21. Right. That's a up. product of a primary that is free and fair, right. a primary that produces a credible candidate. Right. And I can tell you, if Nigeria begins to get, or Honorable Sedu know this, he's a product. I know his work. Right. I know his uh, constituency. Honorable we have to wrap up, a sir. product of competent um, choice yes. by his people. Yeah. And that is why he has been winning the election. He couldn't have won election if we give this in the hands of one individual. They will never nominate honorable status to be All the right. party. We have to wrap up with that. Thank you very much, Honorable Chima. So on um, this issue of direct or indirect primaries, we're speaking with Honorable Uju Kinsley Chima, who is representing Ohaji, Igbema, Oguta, or West Federal constituency of Imo State, and also a member of APC. And we'll be speaking with Honorable Sergius um, Ogun, who is also representing the Ishan Northeast Federal Constituency of Edo State. Issa. Uh, <laughs> Issa. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on the show today. I think, um, to summarize, I think Nigerians have a trust issue with parties. We don't. Mm -hmm. we, we just have a trust issue. And um, mm -hmm. if we continue with the system where a uh, certain it? group of people are deciding mm -hmm. who, becomes a, who, who, is a, who goes into primaries, Nigeria still consider distrust. But once you open it up where we feel like every car carry member can be a part of the process, even though it's expensive, it begins to gradually win the trust of the people. Nigerians can say, okay, I'm part of this process. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can be, maybe things can get better. So is the step in the right direction, as Miriam has said earlier. Yes, it might cost us a bit, but I think many Nigerians believe that this is a good it's step well. and we should actually embrace it. That's all we can take on the show today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.